do i think they need to walk around with a, with a, with a, with a six-pack no i don't think god's will is like yeah you be overweight forever and shave off decades of your life and never get to hang out with your great grandkids or your grandkids and so if we were to then parallel that to financial literacy and biblical literacy in america in a western country there are people bruce lawn here's a here's a great question okay so so jc makes a really good point he says i think where we end up is god's will for us and his grace is sufficient maybe god doesn't want some of us to be rich because maybe it might cause us to fall from him so let me let me just speak on this because i think i think jc you make a great point right there's a proverb that says there's a proverb that says an inheritance attained too early in life is not a blessing in the end an inheritance attained too early in life is not a blessing in the end i instantly think of the story of the prodigal son right the prodigal son he wants his inheritance early and so he asks his dad for it which was very insulting to his father and it is a story that ends tragically and thankfully is his father welcomes him home so i would agree that that the attain, attaining wealth before you're equipped to handle it is not a blessing okay I would agree with that statement. Um, and I would agree that God definitely doesn't want people to be rich if they can't handle it because they're go probably going to fall on their face. And that's not good. That's that's messy. Oftentimes, that's, that's way more messy than um, than the opposite. The, the, the flip side to this, JT, is there are folks who grew up and did not have access to certain information or examples of how stewardship is played out in their life. And the way I would de define it is this. I would define it as this. Whenever we start taking biblical principles and we can and, and we present them as promises, I think when it comes to finances, I think that is when we cross the line into the prosperity gospel. So when we're taking biblical principles from Proverbs and we're declaring them and professing them to be promises, we 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 cross over into the prosperity gospel. But biblical principles definitely point people to a biblical financial literacy. And there are people that haven't had access to said financial literacy or they haven't had the inspiration in someone walking out said financial literacy. So if I were to parallel this to if I were to parallel this to nutrition, as I tend to do all the time, forgive me, there's people who are overweight, they're struggling, they have high cholesterol, they're decreasing their lifespan here on earth. And they don't know what they don't know. Or they generally know that chicken and broccoli is better than food in a box. Yet, they've never seen an example of someone have a physical transformation. It's like you know it in the abstract, but you don't know it in the practical. And so I think those folks need both the information and the inspiration to make the necessary changes in their life. And that could be difficult. That could be complicated, right? And I don't think, and this is going to be a hot take, I don't think it's God's will for them to be overweight and to live a shorter life and to have high cholesterol and to have hypertension. I don't think that's God's will. Do I think they need to walk around with a, with a, with a, with a six pack? No. I don't think everybody needs to be shredded. I want to be shredded because I want to be at elite level shape. I want to be great at whatever I do. But I don't think God's will is like, yeah, you be overweight forever and shave off decades of your life and never get to hang out with your great grandkids or your grandkids. I don't think that's God's will for them either. And so if we were to then parallel that to financial literacy and biblical literacy in America, in a Western context, there are people who either don't have the information of how do you earn more money? How do you manage the money that you do have? How do you develop more skills? What skills and what areas should you develop? Hey, you wanna see something kind of crazy? Over 75% of the people that watch this channel are not subscribed. Please consider subscribing and turning your bell notification on so that you don't miss anything we have going here. All right? Peace. What, what should you be investing your time in? How do you do these? How do you manage the money? How do you deal with credit? How do you get pay off debt, right? There are people that don't have that, 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 that information. And then there's people that just don't have the inspiration of someone having walked that out in front of them. Those people need both. And there's nothing like seeing one of your close friends get out of debt and believing that it's possible. We were the first ones in our friend circle to get out of debt. We paid out $45,000 in 18 months. It was actually $100,000, but there was 60,000 of it that I settled for, um, for 1,000, which, which was a miracle in hindsight. 
And we were the first ones in our in our friend circle that was like, yo, it's possible. People saw what we did and we're like, we, we believe we can do it, right? And I'm one of the first ones in my friend circle to lose 30 pounds. I've done it twice now and get super shredded. And people are like, yo, it's possible, right? And so are there things beyond our control? Yes. But when it comes to fitness, listen, what you put in your mouth is not beyond your control. When it comes to finances, you spending, the average American spending 30 hours of TV a week, 30 hours of Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube a week, that's not beyond your control. You dig what I'm saying? You can, people can learn almost any skill in about 20 hours. 20 hours is deliberate focus. Deliberate is the key word. That means you could learn almost anything about 20 hours. So figure out what the most scarce skills are, right? And you reverse engineer that, right? And so I think these conversations are important, but I think sometimes what Christians do is we just stay in this, maybe God doesn't want some of us to be rich because it might cause us to fall from him. Sure, yes. There are some of you guys that if you had a million dollars in your bank account, you would act a fool. Agreed. But I don't think that's most people. <laughs> I don't think most people are going to have a million dollars in their account. I think most people right now, according to the statistics, are living paycheck to paycheck. I think most people are unsure if they'll ever be able to buy a home if they're not already homeowners. I think most people uh, can't afford a $500 emergency fund. I think most people aren't doing well enough that they could even get to the place of being a multimillionaire that it could destroy them. And so if I'm thinking about most people, how can we reduce this to the lowest common denominator of saying, hey, I don't want you to walk around 50 to 100 pounds overweight. It's it's killing you, literally killing you. I don't want you living your life paycheck to paycheck and in debt. And that is killing you too. The stress and attention of that is killing you too, right? So what do we do? Well, we got to look at the outliers. We got to look at the people who, who, who have defied the odds. And yes, it's not going to be a perfect one-to-one. -one. Respect. Everybody doesn't got the genetics to be, be walking around at 10% body fat year round without starving themselves. Respect. I get it. But it doesn't mean you can't be within a healthy BMI. It doesn't mean you can't be within a healthy body fat. Right? It doesn't mean you, 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 you can't operate and, and, and thrive and, and, and become a functional, contributing human being to society. And there's a lot of people that are hurting. There's a lot of men right now that are hurting. A lot of women right now that are hurting. A lot of folks that are overweight. 70% of Americans are overweight. 40% of them are obese. That number is only going to increase, by the way. Right? So if, if, if we're considering these, and by the way, and, I, and again, I don't think the government's going to fix it. Some of you guys are like, we're going to get bailed out of student loan debt. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's what Sleepy Joe wants you to believe. And then what happened? Supreme Court shut it down. Which I would, I would have loved all you guys to get, what it was it, 20 grand? 20 grand? I would have been dope. 20 grand, I would have been dope. I would have loved you guys. That's not, come on. That ain't going to happen. You're more likely to figure out how to earn more money and knock out the debt yourself. And you will walk, walk through that process having experienced and developed the diligence and the self-belief and the determination to do something that otherwise you wouldn't have been able to do. And that's a W. That's a W. So some of you guys were banking on that. Oh, man, I hope hope our $10,000 of student loan would have been paid off. Well, unfortunately, it's not. But maybe it's a come up. Right? Maybe it's a, oh, man, it's not going to happen the way I want to, but it's going to happen in a different way, which is actually going to serve you better. Just a thought. Just a thought. So anyway, with this conversation, I think JT is right. But I don't think that's where most people are. Most people aren't in danger of, of getting so shredded that they become a sex icon. Most people aren't in danger of that. That's just reality. Like most people aren't like, yo, if I do the empty your bucket plan with Coach JT that Ruslan always talks about, I might get so shredded and so in shape that like I just will, psh, the women won't be able to keep their hands off of me and I might fall into adultery. Like, that's not where most of us are. That's not where most of us are. Right? So I I just, uh, <laughs> I just, I am not going to uh, worry about stuff like most people going to get rich and then, oh, they're going to forget forsake God. Yeah, nah, most people ain't going to get that rich. Most people ain't going to get that rich. Hey, this is a segment from our daily after party stream. Consider partnering with us online for as little as $5 a month to get access to these daily after party streams completely unedited. 
You'll also get access to our podcast as they are streamed live into the community before anyone else gets to see them, get to interact with our guests, get access to our private Discord server, and a discount code for our store for as little as $5 a month. Ultimately, that will help towards helping us continue contextualizing the gospel using media and podcast here on YouTube. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.